We have reached the last of my stash of 6 ASUS P2B motherboards. 5 boards, which I covered in other videos, are functional again, even though some of them look like they are beyond any possibility of repair. Which brings us to board number 6. It does not have corrosion on the ASUS chip or the ISA slots, a common issue among many of the other boards. The problematic spot on this board is right next to the ATX power connector. In the first video, we briefly looked over all the boards, and board number 6 had a noticeably discolored capacitor in this corner. Most likely, the capacitor leaked and caused all the corrosion we see in this area. Speaking of corrosion, some SMD capacitors, jumpers, pin headers, and this fuse are affected. But there is also corrosion inside the ATX connector. Since we are dealing with a power connector, I decided to replace it instead of trying to clean it. I should have the correct connector on one of my donor boards. Then let's inspect our suspect, the capacitor right next to the ATX connector. It does look a bit odd. Its shell isn't smooth and looks pretty beaten up. Almost as if it boiled and bubbled up. I guess we will know more once we remove it from the board. And yes, this is the culprit responsible for all the corrosion on this board. Look at the uneven shell and the dried brown substance at the bottom of the capacitor. That is most likely the electrolyte that leaked and messed up the board in this area. But let's see what values we get from the component tester. Okay, we have a very low ESR, but a VLOS of 14%, which is way too high. Also, a capacitance exceeding 1200 microfarad could indicate that this capacitor is leaking its charge. The numbers suggest that this capacitor is defective and could cause all sorts of issues if it were to remain on the board. Similar capacitors in good condition that I have measured on board number 5 have around 900 microfarad and a VLOS below 3%. Unfortunately, the leaked electrolyte caused the surrounding area to corrode. With the capacitor and the ATX power connector removed, we get a better look at the devastation the content of this small component has caused. As with other boards, corroded solder proves to be very difficult to deal with. Inside the plated holes, you can see some solder that no longer melts. The pin headers left square shaped imprints behind. In a previous video, I used the cleaning tool that came with my desoldering gun to clean out those holes. It worked very well, and therefore I will use it again for this board. The corrosion also made it under the ATX power connector. Same as with the pin header, we need to clean it properly. This time however, I will be using the engraving pen to get most of the crusted solder out. Now that we have freed the surface from corrosion, let's have a look at some components and wires. 
I got 0.3mm drill bits that are the right size to fit through the wires. Since there are just a handful of them, I decided to do this manually. You may have also noticed that the corrosion damaged some of the SMD pads. As a precaution, I will run some copper wires from the back of the board to the front and reconnect new SMD components. The corroded terminals on capacitors and resistors make them almost impossible to reuse. We also need to replace this fuse, which is broken by the way. Now that everything is clean, we need to get some replacements from a donor board. The ATX power connector on the P2B has 20 pins. That rules out the connector from this Intel board, because it has a 24 pin connector. However, it has the correct fuse I need for the ASUS board. And then I found a matching 20 pin ATX connector on this board from MSI. That is the perfect time to test my new hot air station. I hope I can get the plastic connector off without melting it. It took some time, but here it is, in good condition and not melted. Now that we have all the required spare parts, let's reassemble the final P2B. Board number 6 is back together. I also replaced one serial port, one parallel port and of course the chip that controls the CPU core voltage. This P2B can now deliver the correct voltage for copper mine Pentium 3s. Let's see if the last board posts on the first try. All my other boards required at least 2 attempts. 
Since we have seen poor connection issues on previous boards in the slot 1 connector, I cheated a little bit and already applied contact cleaner ahead of time. And we are at 6 working P2Bs. All 6 boards are working again. And some got an upgrade along the way. In one of my previous videos I mentioned that I would start selling those boards. So here is your chance once more. If you are interested in one of those boards, please contact me. There is an opportunity to get two of those boards to Germany in the coming weeks. Use the email on the screen, tell me your preferred board number and then we will figure out the rest. And if you want to learn more about each board and haven't watched its dedicated video yet, please browse through my channel. All 6 videos were released chronologically. I think we are all happy that the restorations are complete. All 6 boards are working again and I can focus on other content now. Based on the declining number of views I got for each P2B video, I am sure you are happy too to see some other content from now on. Board number 6 will be the one I use to get a bit further in Need for Speed Porsche. I'm halfway through the golden era and can't wait to unlock the bonus car. So thank you all for your patience. I hope you enjoyed this restoration marathon. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please let me know in the comments. Finally, I want to thank all my patrons for their invaluable support. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos. 3, 2, 1, GO!